Hi, my name is Sue Rowe, and um, today I'll be talking about creating interactive environments in 3JS. So first of all, what exactly is 3JS? Um, as previously mentioned in a tech talk, WebGL is a JavaScript API that allows you to render 3D and 2D graphics without the use of plugins. And 3JS is, is an essentially um, an abstracted layer on top of WebGL that makes WebGL a lot easier to use. And with 3GS, you also have your choice of renderer, so you don't actually have to use the WebGL renderer, but you can also use the HTML canvas element, and you can also use SVG. And it's supported across a ton of browsers, so you don't actually have to download an application in order to experience your full immersive environment. Um, and here are a couple of examples. I tried to load some examples that were slightly different than the museum me that you all saw yesterday. Um, so, there actually was, Arcade Fire did a really cool interactive music video that I wanted to show you. Um, and I thought it was really cool because it basically put a bunch of 3D graphics um, and 3JS elements on top of a 2D video. from last night. <laughs> um, and so this was also built only using 3JS, and it just is using your mouse controllers. Um, and also, playing around with 3JS and interacting and trying to learn the animation framework, I built my own project. And it basically just uses a 3D plane, and so this is what you see here, is a 3D plane. I mapped that the normals, and then you can also animate it. And then I added some cubes to the middle of it, maybe in nighttime. That's basically, that's basically it was, <laughs> for the examples for what you can do with 3JS. Um, all right. So in order to make your first basic scene, you need a scene, you need a renderer, you need a camera, and you need an object or two. Um, so in order to set the scene, as um, Jihei talked about in her, uh, tech talk, you basically set the, set the scene width and height, and you can set it for this, um, the size of your window, which will make it responsive. Um, you can set some camera attributes, you can set the aspect near-far ratio, and you have basically have to append everything to your container to make it show up on your screen. And just to make the scene, it's just that one line, bar scene, new three scene. And then you need your renderer. Um, you also have to append your renderer to the container. You need a camera, and there are di very um, different options for cameras, so you can have it from different perspectives for different scenes. And um, you can use perspective camera, you can or use orthographic camera, and it really changes the user experience. And then you'll see this a lot. You'll see scene add camera or scene add object, and you basically have to remember to add every object or every camera to the scene in order for it to show up. And you need objects. So the, the cubes that you saw, the plane that you saw that made the, just the general atmosphere, um, you need to add some objects. So this one, 3JS gives you basically um, basic geometries to use. So this one, we're this would just show up with a sphere in the middle of the scene, um, but you can also use a plane, you can use a cone, anything. And then you'll see again, scene add sphere. So why use 3JS? Um, as you saw before, you can use it for games. Um, and games, since 3JS is a very fast and powerful engine, it's a very popular framework for building games. But if you are thinking about building games, just think about what kind of game you want to make. Because 3JS is really powerful and fast, but it also has, an, it also uses a lot of C, um, CPU. So um, for more complicated games, games that um, might take up a lot of memory, Babylon JS is a, is a lot better framework for it. But 3JS, I've found, is a, like, unparalleled when it comes to graphics. If, you're, if you have very simple graphics, 3JS is definitely the library that you want to use. And after that, aside on game development, <laughs> aside on game development, actually, I think that you can use it for basically anything beyond games, too. You can use it for just basic web pages. And that's what I started thinking about um, when it came to this tech talk. I really wanted to explore the idea of using 3JS to kind of transform the user experience of normal web pages. So that kind of just transformed the definition of a single page application for me. So I started thinking more about less of web pages like Facebook, but more about a landscape that you can experience um, 
on a day-to-day -day basis for just normal websites. So if, as an example, I wanted to build something that was kind of for my personal website, I wanted it to be a more of an immersive experience rather than just a web page that loaded my resume and stuff like that. So um, here is a very basic example of that. Go to so as of right now, you have your basic scene. I set a perspective camera that you can just go around. Um, that, that blue circle in the middle is my mouse cursor if you are seeing it in VR, which I don't know why you would want to <laughs> see my basic website. And then right now, I have a plane object that um, I'm mapped out the normals to make uh, a sloped atmosphere. And then I loaded two models that I made from Maya, made in Maya. And this, this is what's also really great about 3GS, that you don't have to actually make all of the models that you want to use in 3GS. You can export it from Unity, you can export it from Maya, which makes it really easy. So I exported these two models from Maya that I made. And then if you just browse over the gear, it'll load a new text element and it'll append that scene, append it to the scene, this text element that just says resume. And a similar thing happens when you go over the crab, you'll see projects. Um, so what happens if you click on the text element? If you go to, if you click on it, it'll load my resume. If you go back, <laughs> if you click on projects, it'll load a cube that basically <laughs> loads a scene of what I saw, of what you guys saw yesterday. So what happens if you click on the cube? Uh, it'll take a little while, but it should load the Heroku app. <laughs> Why is it taking so long? Um, so yeah, it's going to take you to the Heroku app. I'm going back. And then if you go back to projects and you just click the right key, it'll take you to the Gray Shopper project. Um, and it'll also take you to the Heroku app. So that um, goes to my fifth point, which was the optional portion of the four things that you need and the optional fifth element, which is interactivity. So if you didn't add the interactivity, this would just be a very basic scene that you can, you can go around, you can use the WASD keys to kind of explore the environment, but you couldn't do any on-click events or mouse entry events. And I think that is what really makes um, the page very unique. Um, so going back to the PowerPoint presentation, you can add interactivity. So this is the basic code for what you just saw. Um, this is the deer. So basically, I already rendered the deer to the, um, to the page. So that's why when you loaded it, the deer is already there. But then you get the element by the ID, and then you basically add an event listener. So when the mouse enters the deer element, it'll basically append the text object to the scene. And then you add an event listener for the text object. And you can keep on adding these event listeners on top of event listeners to make it just more interactive and more um, of a unique experience. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>